Good morning. Welcome to Raw Online. In today's session, we are going to discuss about the internal year. Under the competency-based CBME curriculum, it is covered under AN 40.3, where the features of the internal year have to be described. Let us go through the components of the inner year. Inner ear has an outer bony labyrinth. The bony labyrinth, see labyrinth means maze, is it not in English? So labyrinth implies that there is a series of tunnels or cavities or spaces that are interconnected as a maze. So that is why the inner ear has been given the terms labyrinth. There is an outer bony labyrinth, which is the petrous temporal bone itself. The petrous temporal bone, within the petrous temporal bone, the bone is uh, constructed in such a way that a series of cavities called the cochlea, the vestibule and the semicircular canals. So, comprise the bony labyrinth and they are filled with perilymph. If you see a cross section of this bony labyrinth, we see there is a series of ducts and sacs which are again interconnected. So, they are membranous labyrinth because they are made up of thin ducts and sacs which are present within the bony labyrinth. However, it is filled with another type of fluid called endolymph. Endo means inside. So, Within the sacs and the ducts is the endolymph. Outside that, within the bony labyrinth, in the space between the membranous sac and the bony periosteum. So, within that is the perilymph. We will see later what are the functions of these perilymph and endolymph in the subsequent slides. So, as I just told you, the bony labyrinth is in turn divided into cochlea, vestibule, semicircular canals. So, just to get a picture as how it will be within the cranial fossa. So, this is the temporal bone where there is uh, the external acoustic meatus and the auricle. Auricle will be here in the external acoustic meatus and this is the area which is the tegment tympani and here will be the middle ear. And you see that the inner ear is positioned like this. So, this is the internal acoustic meatus through which the 7th and the 8th cranial nerves leave the pons to enter the inner ear. So, this is the cochlea, here is the vestibule and this is the semicircular canals. So, from this position you can say that cochlea is anteriorly positioned semicircular canals are posteriorly positioned and this vestibule is what is actually positioned where laterally the middle ear cavity will be there to the vestibule. We just saw the divisions of the bony labyrinth. So, what is the division of the membranous labyrinth? The cochlea, the bony cochlea houses the cochlear duct because it is a narrow duct like, so it is called as duct, which is filled with endolymph and that is called as cala media. We will later know why it is called media. And this cochlear duct contains the spiral organ of corti, which is the organ of hearing. There are sensory organs which function as the sensory receptors. We know for all sensory Innovation, there is a receptor needed, from there the nerves will carry the information to the brain where the perception of the sense will happen. So, for the ear, the hearing, the sense organ for hearing is present within the spiral organ of corti and this spiral organ of corti is present in the cochlear duct, which is the membranous labyrinth enclosed within the bony labyrinth which is cochlea. So, cochlea is the bony labyrinth, cochlear duct is the membranous labyrinth. The cochlear duct will continue to the utricle and saccule. Now, this utricle and saccule are sac, 
because they are broad unlike the cochlea or the semicircular ducts these are broader sac like so they are given two different names utricle and saccule and that is continuous anteriorly with the cochlear duct and posteriorly with the semicircular ducts this utricle and saccule are the part of the membranous labyrinth which is housed within the vestibule vestibule is the bony labyrinth within which the utricle and the saccule which are the membranous labyrinth what is their role we just saw cochlea is for sense of hearing so utricle and saccule is for maintaining the balance and equilibrium now when to maintain balance and equilibrium there are two types of motions there is a linear motion where we tend to uh, bend up and down laterally sideways so all those are linear acceleration and that maintaining the balance in linear acceleration and static equilibrium is maintained through the utricle and saccule the utricle and saccule are in turn connected posteriorly to the semicircular ducts the semicircular ducts are housed within the semicircular canals so semicircular canal are the bony labyrinth the semicircular ducts are the membranous labyrinth the semicircular ducts regulate the kinetic equilibrium so they also are responsible for maintaining the balance and equilibrium unlike saccule and utricle they maintain balance during rotation so that was for linear acceleration this is for angular acceleration so when we rotate the head that uh, there is no gravity involved so it is in the same plane is it not so the rotation of head is uh, regulated the balance or equilibrium is uh, maintained during movement especially the rotation of head by the semicircular ducts